welcome um, to this nice little talk, all to you and welcome, Evan. Uh, it's great to have you here. Uh, last night we went out for dinner and um, we asked ourselves how many of you really do know Pinterest. So could you just raise hands if you know it? Okay, most of you know it. Wow. Who does <laughs> not know it? Who uses it? Yeah. <laughs> So, um, Evan, when you started Pinterest, like, it's five years ago? You said, told me yesterday, yeah. in a week, it's like five years ago that you started to, yeah. to code on it. What was your idea when you started this time back? Uh, well, well, first of all, thank you all for coming and, and being interested. Uh, this is my first time in Hamburg, so it's been kind of a whirlwind, but I'm very excited to be here. Um, so, yeah, let's see. We started Pinterest, that'll be five years ago in a week or two. So it's just a little bit younger than that. And um, you asked what the idea was. I don't know that we had like a grand idea at the time. Um, I guess I can tell the story of how we created Pinterest, if that's interesting. Um, so I'll do that. Uh, let's see. So this was 2009. I lived in New York City in the United States. And I was in architecture school uh, as a student. And uh, on the side, I was doing at the time, web design, web coding uh, for some clients, Microsoft, some others. And um, you know, I received an email one day. I was sitting uh, in an architecture studio. And the email was from Facebook asking if I, wanted, if I was interested in working there on the design team. And at the time, Facebook was much smaller. But um, I was very interested. And so to fast forward, uh, I went to San Francisco. And I interviewed with Facebook. And I decided to do that as a job. And so I left, I left New York, and in, in, the, in between being an architect and working at Facebook, I had a month, one month kind of with nothing to do, which is a luxury, as you know. And in that month, uh, my friend Ben, who I'd known in New York, my friend Ben and I decided with a third guy, Paul, to work on this project, kind of a side project. Uh, we ended up calling it Pinterest, but over the course of a few weeks, you know, we designed and, and built this, this web service and launched it, launched it. Um, to a few friends. And so that was kind of the beginning. It wasn't intended to be a, a large company. I never thought I'd be in Hamburg talking to many people. Um, it was very much a, a passion project. Uh, so that's kind of the DNA of the company. A passion for what? To collect beautiful stuff yes. or to? Yes. I, well, first of all, the passion for me is, is uh, technology. So coding, designing, building uh, online has been something that I've been interested in since I was younger. I had the luxury of growing up um, in a family. Uh, had a Macintosh at a young age. You know, I was pirating Photoshop and uh, redrawing, re hacking the, the OS to change all the icons and things when I was younger. And so I'd grown up with that. Um, you know, I hadn't realized you could do that as a job. I kind of grew up on the countryside. You know, not very culturally rich place. Um, but so you know, the idea for Pinterest was I was an architect. And uh, you know, if you're doing a creative profession, well, one thing that's very helpful is getting inspired by what other people are doing. Right? So I remember, as an architect, I loved Herzog and de Meuron, who were doing the, I believe, mm -hmm. doing the, the opera building here in Hamburg. And just seeing their drawings and the way they, they rendered buildings was inspiring and helped me figure out what my voice would be. And so Pinterest, for me, was very much a way to bookmark and save things I found on the web so that I could go back later on and reference them and click back through to the link where I originally found it. Um, for my partner, Ben, I think Pinterest was more about collecting recipe ideas, collecting products he was interested in, um, you know, bookmarking and saving places he wanted to travel to one day. Um, and so that was kind of the, the, the DNA, was this visual bookmarking service. OK. And that's still the way people use it, isn't it? Yeah, you know, we like to say Pinterest is, is not a social network. People call us that very often, but I think it's inaccurate. You know, we like to say that Pinterest is a, is a visual bookmarking tool okay. to help people save and discover creative ideas for their life. So you don't compare yourself to other social networks, but more to other bookmarking services? Yeah, you know, I, I, it's, I don't think we have many, many peers in that regard. Um, we're kind of a different sort of service. We're definitely not a social network. You know, Pinterest is not about sharing as a user. You don't save things so others will see them. Most people who use Pinterest use it to save ideas they're interested in for their life. It's a personal tool. So that's the big distinction. It's almost a bit more like search than it is like a social network. So it's more about self-expression? Perhaps, perhaps, yeah. yeah. 
I think expressions, but even the word expression gets a bit to sharing, right? It is expression, but I, I think it's more useful. Okay. It's much more useful than that. Um, I wouldn't say, you know, I love Facebook, I use it all the time, but I wouldn't say it's particularly useful for my life. It's a great way to keep in touch. Um, you know, Pinterest is very useful. It's a way that I save ideas to make my life richer, right? Things I want to cook, uh, you know, tattoos I want to get. No, not that one, but that's very common. Um, yeah. Yeah, but it's really good to get to know people. I mean, if I, when I look at your boards, um, yes. yeah, I saw that you are really into X. You love X. Yeah. You a lot of X recipes <laughs> and architecture. That's right. I guess maybe you're right. Maybe it is self-expression. Um, but I, I just want to point out, I think what I'm trying to say is you can learn a lot about people through what they're saving, what yeah. they're curating on Pinterest. But I would say if you go into Pinterest thinking it's a place to share things with others, I think you'll miss the core value which is really just bookmarking and saving ideas you find that are interesting. All right. So how many users do you have today? You know, we don't actually talk about that right now. We, I'm sure we will one day. Um, you know, we've been focused this year, our focus has been international growth. And so we're very large in the US and North America and English speaking countries. And, and this year we're focused on, on Europe, on Western Europe, Germany and France. Uh, and we're also, you know, we have a, we have a small office in Berlin and we have an office in Paris and an office now in Tokyo and one in Sao Paulo as well. And so this year we're really spending a lot of time trying to understand uh, what it means to make this product, this service, globally useful, globally relevant. Why do you focus on these countries? Uh, we focus on these countries because in our minds these are kind of the taste-making cultures of the, of, of the world, right? And so we choose Tokyo and Japan because we feel like that's the cultural center in many ways of Asia. Uh, same thing with Sao Paulo and Brazil, same thing with Berlin and, and Paris, right? Uh, these are the places, in our, in our opinion, that the taste making is, is coming out of, that is driving the culture. And, you know, Pinterest is not just a service, it's also a brand for people, um, right? Like every company, we have a strong brand, not every company, but we have a very strong brand, and it's important to us that that brand is aspirational, that it's, you know, a little bit of a higher thing, and I think starting in these countries helps us build that image from the beginning. Okay, so you look a lot at quality taste making. That's really important for you to <clears throat> draw other people then into the platform too. We think so. Um, you know, on Pinterest, people are saving and bookmarking links back, but they're also discovering all sorts of things. You know, we say that. Um, you know, it's a, it, one interesting way to talk about Pinterest is to compare it to search, and on a traditional search engine. Uh, those services are exceptional, uh, but one of the things they're best at is very objective information, right? So how far is it from Hamburg to Berlin? You know, a search engine can give you that number very quickly. But there are lots of questions that I think everyone has every day that are much harder for a machine to answer, that you kind of want a human with good taste to answer for you. So if I was looking for a film to watch uh, or a coffee shop to go to, I would much rather ask a friend of mine with good taste yeah. than a machine. Um, you know, that's parsing through a database of reviews. They, they're both useful, but I think what pictures can do is help you discover these things that are relevant to your interests because other people are saving them and, and commenting on them. And uh, when someone saves it, uh, is it at least interesting for this one person? That's right, that's right. Yeah, we have over 30, well over 30 billion pins so far on Pinterest and it's growing all the time. And you, you make a good point, which is that each of those things was saved by an individual, a human being. And so by definition, those things are interesting to at least one person. What are the main interests of the users? Is it still food and weddings and? Yeah, I think, you know, we could talk, I talk about the main interest, but I think one thing it's important to point out is that it is a very broad okay. cross-section. Yeah. There are things that are not as big, but I think it's a very broad cross-section. So things like food and drink are very popular. Yeah. Fashion is very popular. Uh, home interior it's ideas. the recipe idea of then. Recipe idea, yeah, but, yeah. you know, I think we were talking about this last night, there are many very large communities of people using Pinterest for very different things you may never think about. So for example, uh, there are millions and millions of teachers uh, on Pinterest every month saving lesson plan ideas, saving ideas for activities to do you know, with the, the children in their classroom. Um, there are many parents using Pinterest for a similar activity, you know, ideas to do, you know, for ideas to do with your kids on the weekend. Um, there are people using, using Pinterest for fitness, um, for, for all less, sorts of How does things. this work? What's that? To, to use Pinterest for fitness. For exercise <laughs> ideas, okay. right? Like you want to, you wanna, you wanna, I want to get fitter, right? How do I do that? What's an easy way to do that every day? What's a useful set of exercises I okay. can do at home? All right. 
All right. Did you ever imagine the teacher would use it? Probably not when you started like five years ago. No. How did it change over the time? How, how did Pinterest change? Do you still like the first designs you did? I never like any designs I do, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, never satisfied. But yes, you know, I think in some ways Pinterest has changed dramatically, and in other ways it's still very similar. Um, one of the ways it's changed the most is that you know, as the company has grown and we've had the luxury of having many hundred uh, engineers and, and developers working with us, you know, we've started to shift the way we think about discovering new content away from just following people like Twitter or Instagram and more towards recommendations based on what you're interested in. And that's a fundamental difference in the product that I think is exciting for me because we can build on that recommendations idea for many years and make it better and better. And because it plays on our core asset, which is that if you've pinned 100 things, we have 100 data points about what interests you and we can help save you time by making the recommendations more personal to your taste. Okay. And as I know, you really focus on mobile now, isn't it? Like building the product for mobile. I, I know there's the saying in your company, kill the website, isn't it? <laughs> How did you hear that? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, one of our uh, employees, Tim Kendall, two years ago, sort of made, he's kind of joking, kind of nice, we should just kill the website um, and work on the phone and tablet only. And I don't think we would do that. That would be, that would be a bad idea. But um, yeah, you know, for but the you last wouldn't year, start, You wouldn't start it as a website again if you would start it now, would you? Probably not. I don't know. Okay. Um, I haven't thought about it. I'd have right. to think very hard. But uh, you know, I about a year and a half ago, we started. You know, I ran the design and uh, much of the product strategy, and so we started thinking about uh, when we're thinking of new ideas, new features. Where do we do that? And it's very obvious, but we've been doing that very much on the phone, on Android and iOS, thinking using that as the platform with which we lead what we build, and then we follow on the web second. Okay, <clears throat> how many? Mobile users, uh, how many, how is the percentage of mobile users now? Is it like um, I think what we say externally is that about 80% of our traffic to, to our web service is, is through the phone. All right. Um, so it's, it's the majority of usage. But that's why you focus on the mobile product and then. Are you still developing the website or are you just implementing oh, what we works are. on mobile? Yeah. Yeah. We, we, work, we have many people working on the website. It's not that it's not important, it's just that if you look at, if you look at the, the most basic research, right, many of you probably know this terms of where the world is going, where internet is going, where users are coming from. In the next five years, so much of the world is coming online for the first time through the phone. Um, that's the platform where most of the people will be. It's the platform that's with you. Yeah. And I think our company mission at Pinterest is to help you discover and save, right, creative ideas for your life. Uh, and then do those ideas in your well life. And, and doing those ideas is the part where the phone becomes really interesting for us. You know, I think it's great to be at a computer saving ideas for the future, ideas for later. But what's great about the phone, at least as a concept, is that when you're out traveling somewhere, when you're out cooking that dinner, when you're out shopping, the phone is with you, right? And so we can connect you to, your, to those ideas in a way that we couldn't before the yeah. phone. And that's an exciting opportunity for us. Um, I know that you recently started to try to monetize in the US. How does this work? You work with ads or promoted pins? And yes. Feed. Give us some insights on this. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so we started uh, the promoted pins product last summer, I think in July. And so it's very young. And you know we've had the, the luck and the luxury to be a little bit slower in how we build that product. And um, you know so far, it's gone really well, I would say. It's US only. And we've worked primarily with a handful of partners that we feel are high quality. And one of the reasons we've taken it a little bit slower is that we really want to ensure these promoted pins are a good experience. Uh, they're not intrusive. You know, I think one of the things about Pinterest that's interesting is that much of the content, many of the pins on Pinterest are already coming from businesses, from retailers, from brands. And if you, Do you actually... Do you know how many in percentage? Um, I, don't think, I don't think it's that simple, actually, okay. for us to know, but probably over half. Um, and... You know, if you, one of the things, if you, if you looked at Pinterest and you hid who pinned something, if you just kind of looked at the object, the pin itself, uh, it would probably be very difficult to tell which one was promoted and which one wasn't. And so that's good for us. It means the ads won't feel weird. They won't feel as intrusive as they might in a social network, let's say. And so we've been taking it slowly to make sure that we hit that quality bar from the beginning. But it works till now? Do yeah, you so far it's, it's been great. You know, yeah. I, you know, we haven't shared a ton yet, but we will in terms of results. Uh, one of the most interesting things is that I think we see a lot of earned media. 
So a lot of people sharing and saving these, these ads just in an organic way. And the result of that is that even after you stop running your campaign, you see a lift in people's impressions of your stuff and click-throughs to your service because you've built brand awareness. And so you know, we'll do research to prove that it takes a while to do that research. But so far, we're very optimistic. Do you already have plans to roll it out internationally? Uh, we don't have plans yet, but uh, I would anticipate we will soon. Okay. And then I read about the buy button you are planning so that people can buy stuff. Where did stuff you read about that? <laughs> somewhere. Um, yeah, we have no plans to do a buy button right now, I would say. Um, but what I, what, what I like about that you're thinking idea, about it, at least? Um, I think about lots of things. Um, <laughs> you know, we just did a very small launch in the U.S. two weeks ago around what we call app pins. So we partnered with Apple. We have a good relationship with yeah. them. And um, Could you just explain how this works? Sure, sure. So uh, people pin apps to Pinterest, right? They save them for later. So if you're, if you're into gardening, let's say... Uh, and you're looking for ideas for your garden, maybe it's a good idea then to come across an app. And so what app pins are is when you come across an app on Pinterest, right? we pull in the data from the app store. For now, it's Apple only. And there's an install button right there, so you can install the app without leaving the service. You know, and for me, again, that gets back to helping you do these things you're discovering, helping, helping you take action on them, not just look at them. Um, and so I, I mentioned the app, the app pins product because I think it's a good template. <coughs> We, it's what we call a rich pin, a pin with lots of useful information to help you decide if you want to do something. And you could imagine the buy button idea being maybe one day an extension of that. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, because I just read your... I thought you were planning this because I also read that you uh, killed all these affiliate links bloggers had in the... Isn't it? That you just yeah. skipped the affiliate links? Well, we've been preventing many affiliate links for years. There were a few that we allowed in. Um, that was not... That idea was mostly about the user experience, actually 100% about the user experience. You know, we found that affiliate links were problematic. Pinterest doesn't work if the things you find don't have a good link. If you find a great jacket you want to buy and you click on the jacket and it goes to a 404 or a spammy page, Pinterest isn't working as a product. And we found that a lot of the affiliate link providers weren't maintaining their links over time and so things were breaking and it was just a very bad or slow experience. And so for now, we decided we're not going to allow that to keep, to keep Pinterest more useful for the user base. But that's just for now. So maybe you're working on it again. Yeah, I know. I, I don't know exactly what we'll do, but we'll, we'll, those, uh, the, that community of people will have a, the, the community of tastemakers that we're using affiliate links are very important to us for obvious reasons. And uh, I think we'll figure, you know, we're working with many of them to figure out the right solution for their business or their, their, uh, their, their skill set. How can brands use Pinterest? To, to get referral traffic to... <laughs> sure, I mean, I think... Do you have good examples for that? Yeah, we, I think we have lots of good examples. Um, you know, I think I like to describe Pinterest about... It, it, it's about the future for people, right? And so uh, if you're using Facebook people or want Twitter or Instagram, yeah, maybe what you want to buy, but you know, most have. social networks are about kind of your past, right? Your, your memories or they're about what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. And Pinterest is different. It's not about those things. It's mostly about the future for people, what they may want. Right. Um, and it's a very different mental space to be in. And so if you're a brand or a business, um, you know, Pinterest is about being part of that mental space for people, right? It's about you know, when you're planning what you want your new interior, your apartment to look like, it's a good place for a brand to help you with that process in your life. And so you know, very tactically, we drive a ton of referral traffic. You know, after Google and Facebook, we're probably the largest. It's hard to know uh, on the internet in terms of traffic driven. Um, but it's not just as simple as us driving traffic. You know, we also generate so many impressions, and it's a very valuable place for people to come across your brand if it's in the right context. And so I think, uh, you know, for brands, it's about it's about being useful. It's about being helpful to people as they're planning these ideas for their future. And examples of that, I mean, I think. Uh, the whole range of lifestyle businesses and brands are, are popular on Pinterest, and even brands like BuzzFeed are doing really exceptional work. Uh, you know, what, Buzz, what BuzzFeed is doing um, is kind of looking at the content they think is interesting, and then they have a team. You know, they saw so much traffic from Pinterest, they built a special team that takes that, kind of reformats it to a way that they think makes it more popular or discoverable on Pinterest, and that's had a lot of success for them in terms of traffic-driven. Okay, oh, that's interesting. Um... Do you have like five most important tips for us to use Pinterest if you're a brand? Is there something Probably like this? not. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I think you know we have a, a set of really good guidelines um, on our partner website, and um, you know we're just starting in Germany to understand what will make the service useful here. 
Uh, right? We built a team. It's been around since last August. Um, actually, the leader of that team uh, is so devoted that he took a flight to the United States during the World Cup final, which is crazy. Um, That's true. But, uh, <laughs> you know, so we've been working with, I think, I think what we've learned, and it's very obvious, but what we've learned in Germany and in France as well, although they're very different, is that uh, if you're discovering a recipe on Pinterest, right, you want to, it needs to be actionable if you're in German, if you're a German, right? That means it needs to be relevant to your life, the ingredients need to be in the right metric system. And so partnering with local businesses and brands is a very important way of making the service more useful to the users, right? And so we partnered with Audi and Porsche and Maggie and, and several other German businesses and we'll be doing more in the, in the months to come. And the goal there is to help what we think are great brands like great German brands connect with connect with German like German audience, and also to get the stuff that they're building and creating for their customers discovered on Pinterest by by, by the millions of German users we're going to have in, by end of the year. All right, thank you. I think the guitar means that we have to stop. <laughs> thank you so much, Evan. Well, thank you very much.